Steve again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7 and as you would have seen by that cool intro or the thumbnail you can see that we're going to do our first NFG RC build off. Now what it's going to comprise of is myself and Crazy Carvo. We both get a car and do it up with our own uh, ESC and motor and servo and just have it a bit of a battle. Now my weapon of choice is the Proline MT 4x4. It's a 110 scale pre-built roller so it's not as um, complex as a build as Carvo. He has the uh, Tecna MT410 so that's more of a kit. You have to put that together. Um, this guy's pretty much a pre-built roller. I just got to put the ESC, the motor, all that kind of good stuff in there. Now it's going to be a multi-part series. In this one we'll unbox it to show you what we get and we're going to show you what I'm going to be using in my base. Now, part two we'll probably build the cars on camera and get it all into running state part three we we'll probably bash them together I'm not too sure what we're going to be doing speed tests uh, durability tests all that cool stuff whatever it's all going to be fun though now like i mentioned carbo will upload his own video on our channel here rc tanks and trucks interval seven title the same just be techno mt410 same concept but uh, yeah should be cool haven't done it before so whatever we'll give it a go let's open this bad boy up i'll show you what you get and uh let me know what you think I think it's a pretty cool platform. It hasn't, it's, it's nowhere near new. It hasn't been just pre released. It's been around for a while now, but uh, it's the first time I've seen it. And we wanted up for this build series, we wanted a 110 scale kind of platform, rugged, dual, and just go completely ballistic with the power system. So I've got some pretty, <laughs> pretty overkill stuff for this. And I might end up changing it later on, but uh, we'll see what it is. This isn't entirely new, it's been around the market for a little bit, but it is extremely durable and basically it's got one eight size like running gear, you can put one eight size motors in there on a one ten scale platform, so that's pretty cool. So, quick look over the box and we'll go inside and have a look. It's strong, durable, control, power and impact, so we have front pivot ball suspension, awesome stuff, I really do like uh, pivot ball suspension, 17mm wheel hex, Front and rear set and center differential with Mod 1 gears, awesome. Hardened steel ring and pinion gears, which is what I want, because we're going to be putting some pretty serious power in here over the top, but that's how we do it over here. Aluminium motor mount system, accepts 110 scale 4x4 and 18 uh, scale motor systems. Massive Mod 1 gears, that's important, and that's what I really like. Impact, performance shocks, huge 16mm bore, aluminium shock bodies, hard chrome, coated shaft to reduce friction so that's pretty cool not much else to see now, the good thing about this it does come with a set of uh, proline tires as well and also well comes pretty much ready to run except for electronics you've got to prepaint the body which is all good in the hood but uh, enough of that let's go see what you get inside okay now we're greeted with first up oh, first up stickers we all love those Instead of looking through the plastic, let's see what you actually get. So you get a sweet 17mm wrench, foam padding, or spaces, I'm not too sure. Aluminium wheel nuts, and some other hardware in there. It does have a pinion gear in here as well. There we go there, but we'll look at that later on when we put the motor in. Antenna tube, and the Proline MT instruction manual. So it's all pre-built, but this is always good for when you do break it, because we probably will break it, especially if Carbo gets his hands on it on how to put everything back together with some nice exploded diagrams everything you need and replacement part listing already here we go so like I mentioned it does come with a full set of Badland tires these are awesome I love these but go to tire especially for this platform so obviously you get a pair of those and here it is here let's get it out of the box alrighty they're all out what do we have here the thing is nicely packaged, but I'll get this uh, plastic off and have a closer look. Now, I do like these uh, no body clip body posts or body securing system. Just basically a little plastic nut. And you can buy these for your like replacement for your tracks of slash and all that kind of stuff. And it just screws on. That's it. Really cool. I like that idea. My best or my favorite is the uh, X Max style with the uh, little clip. And these are definitely. A second. Here we go. All right. Okay, so here is the chassis itself, and I do like the overall design. I do like these high sides here to stop, you know, or to mitigate any, uh, you know, large rocks, sticks, and huge chunks of mud getting in the chassis. That's really cool. Also extends up here as well, so when you obviously steering angle, it's kind of stopping a lot of that mud getting in there. So that's really nice. Here is a 6061 T6 
aluminium chassis. It does have a hardened center spine, which is pretty cool. Uh, so I don't think you can see it, but yeah, sounds cool anyway. But uh, it does have these nice raised edges that will definitely help with the overall rigidity of the chassis. It's got these kind of the bumpers here, kind of are plastic, and they mend into the uh, aluminium part. So that's kind of cool design. See how that holds up with the abuse, but everything does look nice, countersunk as you'd expect. Now up the front we have our traditional pivot ball suspension, tough, durable, and it does offer a lot of uh, adjustability and tuning for your uh, suspension. Massive 17 mil hexes there. Overall looks very sturdy, thick A arms, top and lower. And you notice that they're they kind of are all filled in, kind of one massive chunk. So that should be pretty, uh, pretty damn, well, pretty damn durable. Um, and if any of you guys have this, let me know in the comments what breaks, what you have broke, or if you haven't broken anything, because I'd like to know. The bump here, while we're at the front, you can see when you push into here, it's kind of got like a little, little give there, that little part of the bumper, so you can absorb some of the impacts, which is nice. It kind of extends all the way down and as you can see it gives a bit of a flex so it's kind of absorbing a lot of that energy before it transfers it somewhere else. So we have a sway bar at the front and the rear. Really cool. I like to see that. And you can see that these shocks are massive. They are. Well they, even though this is a one tenth scale, they're definitely up for one eighth scale. Really nice. I do like them. They are aluminium bodied. They also have a hard chrome coated shaft. I guess for, for strength but also to reduce friction as well. And also inside there it's got a double X-ring seal so that just helps prevent from leakage because with the hard landings this guy's going to get every little bit uh, helps that's for sure. But they are the same front and back as you can see. I do like it. Massively beefy and a lot of this car it's, it's a lot of it's plastic and metal combined to uh, hopefully make it durable enough and yet light and not too heavy because as you can see at the front here these shock towers are massively thick but at the front here you've got this nice bracing huge aluminium chunk as well and that kind of ties see here front and rear ties these pieces together this is my first pro line i don't know if does that make any other kits let me know but uh yeah you can see just up in there massively thick what's that four or five millimeter Pin, yeah, what are they? Yeah, retainers for the AM. Really cool. I do like it though. You do have some adjustability as well. You have two holes at the top here and also two at the bottom if you want to uh, adjust that. It does have CBDs at the front, traditional dog bones there. At the back, we also have CBDs as well. So, really rugged and that hole. I love this whole chunky design. While I'm at the back here, you can see the bumper has that kind of cushion as well. A bit of absorption there to take up some of the impact. And here as well, you have a bit of adjustability for your body height. You can screw that out, lift it or raise it or lower it, depending how you see fit. And that's also at the front as well. Now move on to the steering, and it's all ball bearing. And just by doing this, it's extremely smooth. It's hard to see on the camera. But down in the middle there you have a center drag link and that is aluminium so that should be plenty strong. But moving around this side you can see it does have an adjustable servo saver there is there as well. Now this car has front, middle and a rear differential. They are all um, Mod 1 gears which is awesome. Adjustable, they're uh, sealed front and rear and also the center. And the good thing about it, they seem pretty easy to get to as well. Now I'm looking at the main spur here. Um, it looks plastic, definitely feels plastic. That's a little bit disappointing. The amount of power we're putting into this, it'll might chew that, but hopefully there are some options to get that later on. I'm just looking at here the uh, the server mount. That's incredibly thin, but it is aluminium, so it should be pretty strong. And everything is pre-built, ready to rock and roll. So I think that's about enough of the chassis. I'm loving it. I do like the smaller form fact. I'm used to kind of larger cars. Don't need to go over much of the tyres. Proland Badlands, they're excellent. There's plenty of videos about that. But let's go through what we're actually going to be putting in this because Carbo and I got the very similar setup. Now for the powerhouse, the good old Mac 6. Yes, I know you're going to be screaming in the comments as well. It's more than enough power for this, and indeed it is. The uh, Max 8 will be more than enough, but these are at RC Mark 
for so cheap and I thought you know what I'll grab one of these because it'll be perfect we are crazy and uh, you know what we'll see if it works if it doesn't we'll put it in something else but yeah trying to find a place for this is going to be a hassle because the motor's going to go there where can I put this puppy that is the question and uh, yeah anyway Max 6, people run this in their X Maxes, so this is going to be more than enough power for this. Anyone that doesn't know this can go all the way up to 8S, super reliable, great, uh, you know, all around waterproof, programmable, yeah, can't go wrong with the uh, Max 6. Now, for the motor, Carver has one of these in his Monster Slash, and it's a fantastic motor. It's a 10 shock X802L version 2, so basically it's a 1 8 scale truggy or monster truck brushless motor. Now this is the latest generation. It's a six pole brushless motor. It says here it gets less hot so it, just, it obviously dissipates the heat easier. 10% lower than the previous model. Quick specs here. Motor length 73.5. Motor diameter 42 mil. Shaft 17 by 5 and a weight of 360 grams but whatever let's just have a look. There it is there. Awesome, so it's a 1950kV 802L version 2 10 shock 6 pole brushless motor and as you can see it does look awesome in there I'm liking that, so that can go there this oh, cooking with gas oh look at that, oh no it doesn't fit <laughs> hmm I guess we could kind of make it work kind of, kind of fits but it doesn't you know what I mean first world problems guys first world problems because we're going to put an NFGRC well, I'm, just going to, I'm going to run I'm not going to run 8S on this it's just ridiculous 4S on this is even more than enough I've got 6S batteries as well so we're going to chuck that bad boy in there and see how that goes I think it's going to be yeah definitely going to be breaking something especially if this is plastic um, but if it's meshed well enough and it's good quality plastic, it should be okay. But the problem with plastic, even though the mesh is good, sometimes the heat gets a bit too much and starts melting things. So Now for the servo, I've got a few options. At the moment, I might go for this JX CLS5830 high voltage. It's a waterproof servo, 30.3 uh, 30 kilos. So it's got more than enough torque for what we need. Operating speed at 6 volt is 0.11 seconds. At uh, 7.4 volt, it's impressive, is 0.09 seconds. Now, 6 volt, the store torque is 24 kilos. At uh, I think 7.4 is 30. So, even when I'm running it at 6 volt on the back, 24 kilos is more than enough for this particular size car. So, let's just get it out quickly. I have the JX48 or 38 kilo servo currently in my UDR, and that's performing flawlessly as, as uh, well, so far. There we go, there. Main thing about this one, it's waterproof because they're definitely probably running this through mud and all uh, all those good stuff conditions. So there we go. So that's basically the main electronics. We've got the motor, the ESC, the steering servo. I'm going to be probably just running basic um, basic receiver and uh, radio. So not much else to it. I think the next step is we've got to put all this stuff in and start getting in the car. Now guys, hope you like that video. Like I mentioned, it's only going to be part one. I didn't want to go too crazy, too long video, because it's going to be a multi-part series as well. Keep your eyes peeled for Carbo's version of this particular video. Here's MT410. Probably not as good as this. It probably is, but anyway. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Any questions, please leave them down below. Um, keep your eyes peeled for part two for my car as well. We're putting it together on camera, getting everything ready, bind it up, see how it works, see if everything fits, see what issues we have, but uh, that should be fun too. So guys, Thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a good old thumbs up. If you haven't, please subscribe and hit that little notification bell so you get that little ping button when I upload a new video. And I've been trying to do that uh, more regularly now because there's heaps of cool stuff coming up and so much more stuff coming in the near future as well. So thanks, guys. And uh, yeah, Steve here. Thanks for watching. Look out for Carbo's video. Catch you around.